Welcome to another episode of Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Australia's Wicked Smile are all about bringing back fist-pumping heavy rock to the forefront. The boys released one of the albums of the year in 2021, a collection of 10 killer songs produced by Paul Lane. Uh, you remember him from The Defiance and mastered by Bruno Ravel, The Defiance and Danger Danger. Uh, guitarist Stevie Jenevsky goes on to say we're a five-piece kick-ass rock band and i think we made our presence known with the release of our debut album wait for the night lyrically wait for the night explores current issues with in society such as civil unrest bullying and mental health songs like we fall sign of time stays of delirium stronger last goodbye and don't wait for me are all thought-provoking and not the cliche lyrics that you'd expect for this style of heavy rock Wicked Smile has been overwhelmed by the positive response from the underground rock and metal community. Fans of Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Dio, and Skid Row should feel at home with the band, drawing major influence from 70s and 80s heavy rock and heavy metal. Well, the boys released a new EP titled Nighttime Writers, and it toured the United Kingdom for the second time in one year, with dates in November and December of 2023 where they performed at renowned festivals such as Winter Storm and Planet Rockstock. Please welcome the guitarist for Australian metal band Wicked Smile and the father of Aussie rocker chick Cassidy Paris, who we had on the show not long ago, Steve Janewski, to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Steve. Hey, Ray. Good to meet you. Good to be here. Good to be. Good to see you too, man. Um, first, I want to say... You have such a wonderful daughter. She's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> She's a good kid now. She is. Oh yeah. She 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 talks highly about you too. <laughs> That's always nice to know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, you know, I great... taught I taught my two kids the music I grew up with um, at an early age. My son loved yes. My daughter was a big fan of Jethro Tull and Pink Floyd, and we went to a lot of concerts together. But of course, they had their own music interest as well. You know, they like, you know, No Doubt, Disturbed, Weezer, Foo Fighters, Blink, Linkin Park, you know, the music of that time. But Cassidy took it to another level. When did she totally dedicate herself to hard rock music and want to perform it live? Wow. Uh, she's grown up with music, obviously. Um, I've, I've been playing bands for years. And um, from the age of about three years old, she was coming to shows at the Hard Rock Cafe in Melbourne and sitting on a stool just watching. So she was kind of immersed in it. And obviously at home, we play a lot of music and and we have, we play anything, anything that's good, hopefully. I mean, I know that's how long is a piece of string or what's good, but um, anything from Prince to Dio to Taylor Swift to whatever, you know, whatever she wanted to listen to, we allowed her to listen to. So we're very, um, you know, very, uh, positive in terms of you know what music can do for you and how it can make you feel and uh, she's uh, grown up with it and I'd probably say from the age of about it was it was very noticeable from an early age that she liked music you know she'd always be dancing and stuff and um, I think from the age of about six or seven she wanted to play guitar so um, she learned to play guitar so I helped her um, there and I think at the age of about nine or 10, she started to show an interest in singing and um, and then w would just be singing. So she released her first single, Talk About, I think at the age of 13, it came out. And so it's just starting high school, you know, in Australia. So she grew up in a kind of um, a little bit different compared to a lot of the other kids, you know, because, you know, social media was a thing that, you know, she had to be part of whether she liked it you know, um, or, or not, not, I mean, I don't mean it as blunt as that, but really these days you kind of have to have, you know, a bit of a presence, whether it be a, a website or us on, on the socials and stuff. So, 
Um, but she embraced it. You know, obviously there's pros and cons of that as well. And as parents, we tried to um, monitor things um, in terms of what was coming in. Um, but, you know, she learned from a young age that there's going to be people who like what you do and sometimes people who don't, you know, and, and that's the world really. <laughs> so it's a competitive world out there. Some people are good, some people are not so good. Yeah, she she told me you put her in a school that was all about art, you know, music and this and yeah. that, and whatever. But the, I guess the drama kids didn't like her, and she got bullied because of yeah, her taste well, in music. Yeah, well, and that, and that's it's it's a shame, really, because she went from a primary school where everything, all well, elementary school in the states, um, right. where everything was embraced in terms of the arts and stuff, and we sent her to a school which we, you know, presumed was very um, positive in terms of, you know, um, the push in regards to the arts and music and drama and stuff. But sometimes you're going to get kids who, I think she was in a music class. She was the only girl in a, in a music class full of boys. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get kids, um, you know, trying to, um, you know, have a go at her. Like she, she was very into you know, 70s and 80s uh, rock music. So it's what you grew up on. And then you'd have some, you know, kids, boys, you know, saying, oh, look, you've got to play, you know, can you play this by um, mm -hmm. Green Theatre, Petrucci or whatever. And I'm like, I mean, I know who that is, but most people, you know, don't, right? You know, and um, the thing is, is that, you know, Cassidy just wanted to learn how to play, um, to write songs. And um, you, you're going to have your shredders and stuff who are very full on into that. And that's cool, each to their own, but they hassle her about that. But more so from um, the other kids um, in drama class and stuff who'd really sort of try and mock what she was doing in terms of trying to become a become a singer. And, um, yeah, it's not cool. You know, um, sometimes she'd come home in tears because, you know, some kids would sort of mock what she was doing, you know, play her video at school in class and stuff and just mock it and stuff. And I said, look, I always said to her, don't worry, the wheel will turn because That's as right. you, you know, as you become a better songwriter and a better singer and a better guitar player, you know, some of those kids haven't got that realisation of what you actually are doing. And, and now full circle, you know, a, a couple, not many, but a couple have, you know, um, turned up at some of her shows, you know, now that oh, she's what. That. 21 so you know um it's just the way things can you know work sometimes you know sometimes it can be um a real positive experience and we actually um suggested to her did she want to leave the school and go elsewhere mm -hmm. but she wanted to stay there and um good on her you know thick skin to her because she still she still had a you know a good a couple of good friends who were very supportive but yeah, it's it's a life lesson in some ways, um, and and you know what, high school is hard. You know, it's not it easy hard. unless yeah. you're in a clique. It's you know, <laughs> um, you know, luck's got a lot to do with it and stuff. But high school can be really hard. So, um, and I also said to her, I said, you know what, if you stick it out after eighteen, you, mm -hmm. most most of these kids, you know, you generally will not see ever again in your lifetime. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's um, true. You know, particularly those kids you don't want to see you'll never cross paths with them again and if you do you know what i mean it's just like whatever um so and she found that so um yeah she she um there's a lot of life lessons there thick skin and you know uh keep at it and and she i'm so happy she that she did because she was the different one i mean she right you know she knows bands like icon and lillian axe and stuff like that <laughs> and most kids are like uh, uh <laughs> Well, we know Taylor Swift. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, exactly. That's um, all we know. <laughs> but yeah, but you know what I mean. And, and that's a little bit sad because some kids, yeah. you know, the sport kids, you know, if you mention, um, you know, some of the heroes of the past, you're considered mm -hmm. cool. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, well, what's the difference? There should really shouldn't be any difference at all. But ah, oh, well, it is what it is. Um, and you know, she's doing really well, and I'm happy for her. <clears throat> yeah, I told her. You know, most of the uh, the rock women are older now there isn't mm. the rock women like the, the joan jets or april yeah. Levine thing there uh, you know yeah. um you know pink is older i mean there isn't a lot of the rock women i told her i said she's gonna be the new generation of rock for women and you know and she's still yet a young age so yeah that'd be great i mean you have a new generation she can Definitely. influence a new generation
you know? Well, just just recently we had um, Glamfest here in um, in Australia and she joined Janet Gardner from Vixen mm -hmm. with two songs. Very they cool. Was, yeah, she was <laughs> so nice and so complimentary and she's yeah. the one who reached out to Cassidy and said, hey, come up and sing um, Edge of a Broken Heart with me. And Cassidy was buzzed because back in the day when she was like 15, she actually recorded um oh well, not recorded she used to play that song live and there's some videos of her playing that song live and and Very janet cool. talked about that so it's like it's that's the thing i mean you get some people who say oh you know um you know sometimes you get your overnight sensations or whatever it be but cassidy's she knows her stuff and she grew mm -hmm. up on you know and a lot of um uh, you know a lot of fantastic singers and you know she loves obviously vixen and um, Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, Lita Ford, but you know, even more recently with you know, um, Pink and um, yep. Avril Lavigne in terms of her attitude and stuff, right? And right, it's cool, you know. Um, yeah, well, I know Susie Quattro. If you want me to hook you guys up, oh wow, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> she was the yeah. original. <laughs> That's well, Cassidy grew up watching Happy Days, and I remember when she <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, <laughs> as leather, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah, Cassidy was oh, that's the best leather. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But well, Susie's um, really big in England, you know. She, she yeah. you know, she she didn't come to the States anymore, basically, because she got so big in England and she it's lives respect. there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Respect. I mean, and that's the thing. Cassidy always um has because she's grown up with it, she always appreciates, mm -hmm. you know, all the people, whether they reach out and help her or um and um you know, she wears her influences on her sleeves. Every interview, she'll talk about, you know, um, sure. the singers that she grew up with and stuff. And that's cool. You know, sometimes you get some people like, oh, no, nah, wasn't influenced by anyone. It's like, oh, exactly. <laughs> I did it yeah. all myself. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Nighttime Writer. Whoa. Okay. You're going to have an EP launch uh, in Melbourne on the 16th. Is that right? Yeah. Just um, what is it? A bit over two weeks away i think it is. yeah so, uh, it's coming up it's, yeah it's coming up in our hometown of melbourne and i hear it's selling well and we're really looking forward to it we, we've actually just finished up a whole bunch of dates um mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks um where we've played um quite a few shows and uh it's been fantastic so yeah we finally get to launch it in our hometown and um there's a yeah there's four new songs that we um decided to put out and the the whole reason behind the Nighttime Riders EP was because we toured in the UK um, in November and December of last year. And uh, previous to that, we'd been over one year before. Now, to be invited back again has been fantastic, but also we wanted to give um, the audience, the UK audience, something new. And um, we decided to just put that out. And, yeah, the response has been great. It's very cool. So we we we're working on our on our full length second full length album. Oh, good, so, good, good, good. Yeah. So yeah, some of those songs may appear on the the second or the follow up to Wait for the Night. Right. Yeah, Flam Fest that hasn't happened yet, or did it happen? It has. It has already happened. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was. I, it was I, I noticed. Did Cassidy get a higher billing than Wicked Smile? <laughs> um no she she no she <laughs> so that that will happen in the future i'm sure i think she'll be i think she'll be higher she should have been higher um up on the bill right but, um i think she'll be um higher up on the bill um than most artists in australia i mean she's got a record deal um a three album record deal with frontiers wow and response has been fantastic and she That's had awesome. her launch um, just recently and, mm -hmm. and packed the place out like it was so so packed it was amazing but um, no, she actually opened up Glam Fest. Um, right. The, yeah, the flyer. Um, I'm not sure when, where she was mentioned in, um, in that, but a lot of people mentioned that she should have been um, way later on the bill. Um, okay. But you know that, that doesn't matter. I think yeah. it really doesn't matter. Um, if you're good, you're good, and she certainly was good. Like yeah. you know, she did very very well. Um, but um, yeah, with Wicked Smile, we we played at the Melbourne show. And it was it was good. Yeah, it was good fun and. Um, got some good reviews as well. Yeah, you had uh, Slaughter and Lynch Mob as headliners. Uh, yeah. I had George Lynch on the show. He's a good guy. Cool, yeah. man. Yeah. I noticed you had Jeff Pilson a little yeah, while back. Yeah, I, yeah, I met Jeff as well. He's, he's another yeah. good guy. Um, yeah. I'm a George Lynch fan myself. Right. And, um, I loved um, Dokken and Lynch Mob. And, yep. um, 
and let me just say that at Glamfest, it's probably the best guitar tone I've ever heard in my whole life. Mm. Like it buzzed me out. I think he was using a plexi plus extras. It was awesome. He was on fire. He was so, so good. Yeah. And uh, it, that's so cool to see your heroes, you know, yeah. sound play that well, right? So Exactly. Cool. Really cool. Well, here's my review of Nighttime Rider. Ready? <clears throat> yep. Nighttime Rider by Wicked Smile is the prescription needed for every metal fan in 2024 and beyond. A concoction of hardcore musical mastery, powerful vocalization, explosive guitars, compelling lyrical content, all mixed together with undeniable uh, revive and any heavy metal deficiencies. It will revive any heavy metal deficiencies and possibly become an addict of Wicked Smile, the next generation of heavy metal masters. Now, I only gave it, I gave it four and a half stars, not a five, because it was an EP. Yeah. <laughs> if it was an album, I'd give it five. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, you. That's so nice. I wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's, that, no, it really is cool. And thank you so much. The, um, Look, I'll be honest, myself as a music lover, I'm not really an EP person myself. I'm a full right. length album. But the whole idea of the EP was purely to be able to tour the UK. So that was right. the reason behind that. And, um, yeah, we're currently continuing to finish off and demo some new songs. So that's what we're going to be doing for pretty much, besides a few shows here and there, um, pretty much the rest of 2024, we're going to finish the album and then we'll get back over to the UK and hopefully – you know, you know, other places. We're definitely keen on coming to the States. That's for I sure, hope because, so. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you know, but the thing is for us, we need to be able to be on something significant to be able to right. play the sport shows. You know what I mean? Whether it be a Monsters of Rock cruise or something like that, then, you know, we can um, commit to, to doing that and then we can, you know, add some extra smaller shows. Yeah. I'm going to talk about some of the... Uh... <clears throat> the tracks on the album okay it starts out with nighttime riders which you know i saw the official video for that i mean if we had mtv that would be definitely on mtv that's that kind of video um very judas priest very do your singer's amazing man he's oh. like a oh man a, a you know a clone of dio <laughs> you know he is he's something a, else no, danny's great the, the, well, when I formed the band, uh, when I started writing, I initially started writing uh, about four songs mm -hmm. and um, that was just me writing on my own. Right. And then with my mindset of how I wanted the songs to sound, it was time to find a singer. And I've known Danny for, you know, forever basically, but never played in a band with him. And for years before that, I played in a band called Black Majesty, which is right. more of a um, power metal band traditional sort of mm -hmm. metal band and the singer's cousin is Danny um, Ciccardi so I asked um, so when I left that band which I left on very very good terms because mm -hmm. they're still my best mates I said would your cousin be interested in you know having a go at singing some of these um, songs and as soon as Danny started singing we just knew and that's when I knew what kind of style I wanted to mold it into because you can you know, you can write as many songs if you, as you like, but if you haven't got a singer who can sing them, it That's sometimes right. doesn't work. Danny can sing anything. He's one of those guys. He's like a Sammy Hagar. Or, I mean, different. Mm -hmm. or Chris Dickinson or, you know, Ronnie James Dio. Right, exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. He's incredible. He's great. He really is. Right. He's yeah. great. And a fantastic person as well. And guitars. Wow. You know, like Edge of Madness. Uh, do you and Dave trade off lead back and yeah. forth? or Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I start off the solo and then Dave takes over. And um, generally, because I'm writing most of the songs, I kind of set it up so Dave plays second a lot of the time because right. he's he's more of a shredder than me. Um, but yeah, he just rips on that and it's fantastic. So <laughs> I'll more so set the scene in the, in a lot of the solos in our songs, and then Dave takes it, you know, to the, to the next level. Um, and we're all about guitar tone as well. And, you know, yeah. we love great guitar tones. That's what I was mentioning that before with George Lynch. So, I mean, we've grown up on all the guitar heroes and, and love it. Mm -hmm. And even for the, the new demos, we can't wait till we record things proper because, 
it's just something that you, you just enjoy just working you know with um you know different sounds and you know like w w because we're older of course we've got our favorite amps and stuff mm -hmm. as well i got a feeling you you might be uh a fan of tony iomi a little bit oh, I love to, yeah absolutely <laughs> tony Iommi, i love even campbell you know dio era yeah. um so yeah man it's just randy Rhodes, you know so yep. yeah, yeah man. ronnie latecro <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah. that's what we're missing today um yeah, the man, great guitar players and the bands yeah you know, i'm so I sick agree. and tired of the, the the just the girl pop singers you know well, we've had I, enough I, of that yeah well and this is the thing i think um it can sometimes be a bit frustrating where we're a legit uh, a legit band writing yeah. new material and touring all over the world mm -hmm. and yet some of the bands that are getting signed they're just like projects you know what exactly I mean? I you know what I mean? It just frustrates yep. me a little bit. I think to myself, man, how about you? And then the project falls over, you know? And I think, so how about you get a legit band of, um, you know, bands that are working hard and and um, and are good? Of course, you've mm -hmm. got to be good. You've got to have the songs, right? Um, I'd like to think that we sound, you know, pretty close um, live than what we do in the studio because we all sing, we all um, can play guitar and Danny Ciccardi, the lead vocalist, is amazing live, you know? So, yeah. Man, I wish I could see you guys live because you, you are right. You sound live in the studio. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you well, sound look, completely we live. Will, we, will, um, we will get over to the States, that's for sure. Good, because good. I, I love the States. I mean, I've been many, yeah. many times and um, it's definitely a, a, the game plan for the band for sure. I think Cassidy says she went to Orlando. Did you guys go to Orlando, Disney World? Yeah, Chicago. We, yeah, yeah, okay. we did, yeah, I didn't play in Orlando. Um, Cassidy's played a few shows all over the mm -hmm. world. I played a um, part of Melodic Rock Fest a couple of years ago. I okay. think I've done it twice, yeah, I think in Chicago. And um, that was great, man. You know, But I want to play all over. I want to play at, at the Whiskey. I want to play in Vegas. I want to play everywhere, yeah. man. <laughs> hard so, Rock, yeah. play the Hard Rock. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. So Well, how how's your your, your management? Do you have good management? Do you get Well, good you know, this is the, this is the hard part because we're we're self-managed right now. Um okay. and that's the hard part. Um because we we've been offered a f uh, quite a few record deals. Um but it's just that because we've been doing this for so long, a lot mm. of the deals that we've been offered are not worth signing. Um mm. so we um we're very independent um mm -hmm. we've got distribution um all over the world um but america has been an interesting one you know i mean we've had right. a lot of um so yeah the uk we've got distrib uh, distribution we've got um distribution in japan um obviously australia but in america we've struggled with so but uh, you know what i really do think there's it's it is a big hole and it's, it's missing and soon Bands like Journey and that, they're not going to exist anymore. So right. what happens next, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, I'm, we're, you know, we're older ourselves, but, you know, there's still a 20-year gap in between, if not more. So, mm. Well, you know, unfortunately, the people that run the music business, so-called music business, know nothing about music. That's, That's the problem. Right. I know, know, it's frustrating. Absolutely. They know nothing, you know, and they won't hire anybody. You think they'll hire somebody like me? I'd be a great A and R guy, you know. I'm, I'm yeah, good at picking exactly. out what's good. You know, I I bring in a lot of prog bands from all over the world and introduce them to America because they're yeah. very talented, just like you. You That's know, I wanted you on the show because you guys are, you know, you guys could be legends if you get the right, you know, management behind you, PR and. You guys yeah, are great. You guys are incredible. I really mean you. that. It's a lot of, yeah, and you know how it is. A lot of who you know. Yeah, um, and that's what it is. And people forget about the quality of songs, you know, and that and that's our, that's our big thing, and that's what we always say. We go, look, yeah, we could put out an album in two months' time, but we mm -hmm. want it to be really good. And, yeah. you know, that like I'm a fan just like um, yourself and, you know, I'm sure a lot of your viewers there's not a whole bunch of bands around the world who've got all killer, no filler, you know? Right, so, right. and that's what we're trying to do. And when we play and people see us, you know, it, it is a show, you know, we mm -hmm. move around. It's, it's a, it's a rock show. It's, <clears throat> you know, very, very influenced from the seventies and eighties. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd like to think it's quality. Um, yeah.
you guys would have been great on Ozfest when when Ozzy oh, had man. all those tours. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if he's coming back or not. I mean, nobody knows at this point. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. that something like that would be awesome. I mean, we, yeah. we've we've inroads in the UK. You know, people mm-hmm. have, um, you know, people have. We full, you know, packed rooms. You can't get into certain rooms. Yeah, um, I believe it. So, and that's really great. And we play festivals and done signing sessions for seventy five minutes, and then they've had to cut it off. You know, right. so it's been really positive in the UK. Um, but uh, yeah, it's about trying to get to to, to the next <clears throat> level. You know, branching out. All I can tell you is keep getting bigger in the UK, and then maybe Amsterdam. You know, uh, Japan. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. hit all those countries before you yeah. come to the U.S. You know, yeah. that's yeah. what well, happened to Hen- that's what happened to Hendrix. He got big in sure. England, and then finally they they brought him over to the U.S. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, look what Cassidy's it, doing; she's doing fantastic. You know, yeah. that's great. So, yeah, yeah, man. Um, no, nah, very cool. Yeah, are are you Cassidy's manager? Nope. No. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I um. Well, we well I used to be. Um, <laughs> she's um. She's had a lot of good people um, who've helped out people who have even a lot of people in the States, you know. Yeah, good. We worked with one guy who worked um, as Pat Benatar's management for a while. And so right. there's been a lot of people who could see um, where she, she was going, even though she probably quite, wasn't quite there yet a couple right. of years ago. So they could see, hey, man, you know, you know, your daughter's got something special and you can tell. And that's the thing. I mean, Cassidy writes. She's a um, she's a good singer. And mm-hmm. it's it's hard to, to find people the, the real deal. Um, yeah. And that's what I think people are now finding out because she's um, recently turned 21 and her, she's, her, her voice has settled. So she hasn't got the kitty voice anymore. Right. Um, and she's only going to get better and better. You know what I mean? Right. Um I mean, you look at, I'm um, like I've done my research and stuff. You look at people like Lizzie Hale and stuff. They didn't start really singing how the way they sing until they were about mid mid twenties, you right. know. So that's the thing. It's like, man, and she loves Lizzie Hale, by the way. She's an awesome singer. Um, so yeah, there's so much upside, um, mm. and um, and that that's really great. And I'm very, very, very proud of her. Um, but yeah, she's got um, some people yeah looking after her, and it's fantastic. And Let's hope that it just keeps on, you know, keeps on branching okay. out, expanding. Yeah. If you need any help, let me know. I do know Joan Jett's management, and you know I, they have we they have always need company. help, right? <laughs> they, they have their own record company as well, and they promoted a lot of bands. Um, yeah. So I can, you know, pass oh, man, her absolutely. music on onto them if you want me to. Yeah, absolutely. You know? we want you to you know and yeah. th- and that's the thing anyone and that's what has been amazing in terms of the good people who right um, around the world lots of people have really you know wanted to be part of it and wanted mm-hmm. to um, help because yeah it's not easy and she's had it hard man like I mentioned before I mean she copied in in high school for for something th- that was creative you know I'm like yeah. what you know how does this work back in my day if you're holding a guitar when you're walking to school you were a rock star that's right you know, whereas she was the outsider because mm. you know everyone's listening to you know other style of music i don't want to yeah. <laughs> dig any style of music but but basically yeah she's the old school rock chick you know and um but happening now yeah you know in high school i never knew one girl that played electric guitar back in my day right it just never had it never happened <laughs> yeah you well, know? you see some YouTube videos these days. You get kids they're all that are over fun. now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. You go, oh my gosh, they're playing Steve I uh, material, <laughs> <laughs> and I certainly can't play that. Um, so they're playing Hendrix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly right. I, yeah. I just I'm a firm believer um, of let let people um, you know do what they want to do. You know, if, if right. it's a good thing, you know what I mean. Let let sure. let them be creative as opposed to trying to put people <laughs> down. But uh, again, you get your keyboard worries, you get your bullies at school. Actually, yeah. there's one um, Wicked Smile song called Stronger on the first mm-hmm. album that I lyrically wrote about Cassidy's um, experiences in high school. And yeah. I just said, 
look, you know what? Um, the chorus is, you, uh, you can try and put me down, but I'll be stronger, you know? Um, in That's the great. end, I'll, I'll come, you know, I'll come out, um, stronger and, mm -hmm. and she has and that's really cool you know and, and i'm so proud of her because you know finally she's starting to get a little bit of respect which yeah. is cool mm. and the main thing she's got her head together you know she's that's she's right very level exactly. headed. yeah mm -hmm. she yeah and that's right exactly and she can um you know whether it be an acoustic you know or um or an electric and, mm -hmm. and play and perform it's all, it's all the real right. deal. I mean, there's no, like, you know, they're, they're not fixing her vocals or anything like yeah. that. So, and, and as <clears> I <throat> mentioned, she's, you know, still young, so she's only right. getting better. Um, so that's cool. Well, what's cool, if you want to make a splash in America, you guys could do a double billing, right? That You've be done cool. it before, right? I have, absolutely. Do yeah, it in yeah. America, you know? Yeah. Double billing. Well, and... Look, that, that's again. It's it's a good story. I mean, right now yeah. I'm, um, you know, because I've played in played guitar in her band for the last, you know, what since what since she was thirteen. So, wow. um, you know, th there you go. So it's about eight years. Um, I'm actually switching over to bass guitar because we've got um, uh, uh, two brothers who've joined the band. And really, uh, yeah. In so, your, um, in which band? Which band yeah, are you uh, switching? It, it, um, well, I'm switching to bass in Cassidy's um, oh, band. Oh, Cassidy's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah, with a smile. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so slowly, slowly, you know, she can, um, you know, just j just separation, if you know what I mean mm -hmm. by that. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe you like it or not. Some, I mean, it's a great story, and, um, which is fantastic, and I'm super proud of her. But, you know, she needs to sort of fly away herself. And, and yeah. the thing is, is, I've taught her as much as I can teach her. So, um, you know, in a couple, you know, a year or two, I'll, you know, there'll be a, a, someone replacing me and then I'll be from the outside. I'll right. always be part of the, um, yeah. part of things, um, guiding things, but, um, it's, it's great, man. And I've loved it. I really have loved it. You know I mean? It's, it's a, been fantastic to watch her, um, yeah, grow up basically. Well, the main thing is stay close and don't let oh, the vulture, yeah. don't let the vultures get her. <laughs> yeah yeah that's you know? right now look, my, um uh that that's something that I, i've i've done the industry for quite a long time so yeah. we, we are quite aware there's a right. few things learned um but you know sometimes it's it's important for her to actually um experience things as well and mm -hmm. but um definitely i'm going to be guiding wherever possible for sure good 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 but well, the rest of the tracks on the new EP, Never Surrender, which is a pure metal and power energy. It's a battle cry for all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, a lot of your that's music, it. that's what they are. It's like battle cry. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and all Scream and Shout. Whoa. Great vocals on Scream and Shout. Wow. That's that's one of my favorites. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. It, well, that's the intention. I mean, I, again, there's no um we've always said that our whole vibe is that we're, we're very much we wanted to go back to what we were into back in the day yeah and, um take it to the next step so you know we grew up on you know bands like doc and ozzy mm -hmm. um icon skid row uh, and that was cool actually recently we got to um support skid row in australia and uh, that was fantastic. Just to, and to be able to chat to the guys, and um, we were playing a show in Sydney, and I think it was uh, Rachel, bass player, and um, maybe it was a couple more um, that were watching us on the side and put their thumb up. You know, so that was oh, that cool. was like, yeah, it's Very pretty cool. cool. Now we were like, oh man, how good's that? <laughs> because they they're a band that inspired us when we were in high yeah. school to to you know pick up the guitar. Yeah, I heard that. I heard Skid Row was one of your influences. Yeah, you know, I yeah. I took my son to see Kiss on their first um, farewell tour, which was a long time ago because they've had like ten already. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Skid Row opened for them. I've oh, been yeah. to a lot of concerts. I mean, that thousand concerts. I've seen everybody from Deep Purple to Black Sabbath to Zeppelin. You name it. Skid Row yeah. was the loudest freaking band I've ever heard in my life that night. Wow. Okay. I couldn't even talk to my son, who was right next to me, and we were all the way to the back. 
Yeah, right. Okay, so they the were loud of as shit, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Look, it's it's and and that's a beautiful thing. I mean, when I hear stuff like that, I, I love, you know, when uh parents are passing on, you know, um and sharing sort of memories like that. Because I mean, I uh have taken my kids, um, I have a son as well, to to rock gods and, and, yep. and stuff. You know, it's just it's it's awesome. It really is. And um uh, just yeah, really cool memories for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I took my son. The recent concert we went to was Godsmack because oh, cool. he would he was into Godsmack at his oh. age, you know, and then you yeah. know that was his time. So I yes. go to shows that he grew up with now. Yeah, you know, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, that, yeah. and that's the thing. I mean, Cassidy asks me to go to some shows, and I can't remember what was the um I've forgotten the band, and I hadn't heard of them, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was a good learning experience for me. You sure. Know, um, so, yeah, you know, it's just like that's cool. So yeah, it works both ways. Um, exactly. By no means, I mean, when you know, Cassidy is the type of artist she is, but you know, um, we'd expose her to everything. You know, yep. so and it's just that um, she's sort of latched onto that style, and that's cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, your producer was that Chris? Is it um, Thelmelko? Was he the producer of your album? Um, of, of the EP, yes. Yeah, of the EP. Um, yeah, and Paul Lane um, produced the first album, yeah. W- was this recorded at uh, Maniath Manli- Studios? Um, it was it was mixed and uh, and mastered there. So oh, no, mastered there, okay. A, yeah, a lot of the um, recordings were done at our own home studios. I mean, that's okay. the beauty these days right um so yeah i've got my own studio where i did all the guitars so myself mm-hmm. and dave recorded all the guitars here um bass player tom recorded at his place as well and um so yeah man it's just uh and then from there we um gave it to paul you know he's very very busy so um you know um chris uh yeah was available and i think he did a good job i think it sounds mm-hmm. pretty good you know, again, all independent. Like, it's not stupid money spent mm-hmm. on it. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was engineered well. I mean, it's mm-hmm. got a good crisp sound, man. It's really good. And well, then I want to give a shout out to Tristan Tate for the uh, the uh, album cover, right? Yeah. The artwork. Yeah. yeah. We love also. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, again, you know, it's for us. It's about the whole, you know, eighties vibe of all those. Um, bands back in the day, Iron Maiden, and Dio, um, they all had great artwork and mm-hmm. wanted to do that. And this is kind of like the American Werewolf in London sort of sure. influence. Love it. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I got to ask you <clears throat> is it difficult to try and not use the same guitar riffs and licks on a metal album? Because, you know, it, 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 I would think it would be a little difficult. Um. When I was playing in uh, Black Majesty, my old my old band, um, uh-huh. I said it was a little bit tricky because um, I made eight albums with them. So it was after that point for me, it was time to move on and do something right. different. So right. Basically, given as much as I could give, with um, we could smile not so much because it's so fresh for me. Even though it's all influenced by the seventies and eighties, it's so f- um, fresh for me and. A lot of the times, um, the way that I write, I tend to write choruses first, um, where a lot of bands um, and a lot of other friends and songwriters will sometimes in metal write riffs. Um, so I, for me, if the chorus is not good, I don't even bother with the song. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'll write the chorus and then um, see what feels right for a um, for a riff. So um yeah majority of all of all of the wicked small songs have been written that way so to answer your question not really just because it's so fresh for me and Mm -hmm. so new um and i'm and i love it and i'm so passionate about it that if if there was something that sounds similar i'd scrap it right i mean even black sabbath you can hear similar riffs a lot of their music definitely man and (laughs) on some of the new stuff that wicked small that i've written um there is one song, you know, I'm sure you'll probably just grin and just go, oh, that's just so Black Sabbath. But it's, <laughs> you know, a bit, yeah. it's a bit more Dio-y or a sort of Black Sabbath, more heaven and hell um, yeah. sort of 
but it's all intentional. So, and it's meant to be more like a, you know, a nod to mm-hmm. my own, you know, and all, all the greats. So, um, yeah, man, you know, um, like th- there's a difference between, you know, plagiarizing and sometimes showing your influences. Right. Right. And I, I like to think that um, we tend to show our influences, but we've, our songs are still different enough. Yes. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I had uh, Wendy Dio on my show a couple of times. She's a great lady, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, she she did a uh, a recent documentary, just so you know, a new documentary on, on Dio, and it's out. It's on Netflix if you want to check it oh, out. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Exactly. Oh, did you see it? It's good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. It's really good. Yeah. Really? He was, he was yeah. incredible. Oh, well, yeah. Well, for me, Rainbow Rising is one of my all-time favorite albums. Mm-hmm. Heaven and Hell is another one. And, you know, for probably um, as one of my uh, the last in line is probably my favorite song, mm-hmm. which is on the, um, Dio's second album. So yeah. I'm a huge Dio fan. For yeah. me, he's my <laughs> favorite, favorite singer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to mention the band, um, Danny. Is it Sicati? Is that how you say his last name? Danny yeah, Sicati Chicago. on lead vocals. Um, yeah. It's uh, Dave Graham on guitars, you on guitars. Yeah. Uh, Tom Nagara, is it Nagara? Yep, correct. He's on bass. Mm-hmm. And Jason Tyro on drums? Yeah, he's a former drummer. Um, he's a former yeah, drummer, okay. Yeah, when we recorded um, the stuff, that was just before um, uh, he, he was out of the band. So we have been um, playing a bunch of gigs with um, friends um, basically playing drums because, um, yeah, we're just waiting for the that right person to to join okay. the band and um it's i mean it may sound like a big deal to a lot of people because drums is very very important don't get me wrong but um yeah we just want to make sure we make the right the decision sure. yeah yeah <clears throat> um i gotta talk a little bit about wait for the night i did give that one five stars oh fantastic thank you <laughs> i i noticed you credited everybody in the band for the lyrics, the, for credit for the uh, as composers for lyrics, is that true? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it's no, a composer my... lyrics. Wicked smile. It didn't uh, it on, on, on on wait on, for the on, night on the whole album. It said it just said wait for the night. Uh, the composer lyrics, and it just says wicked smile. The the whole band. Uh, All right, I must. Yeah, I've got to yeah. check it myself, but I don't. Okay. It wasn't meant to read that way, um, because yeah, I um re- wrote the whole album basically really it was myself and paul lane um, okay and that was lyrics and um yeah music so whereas on the second ep it's more of a, a band effort because on two of the songs um danny and dave actually yeah, provide input as well um mm-hmm. but yeah the first album was basically my idea after leaving my former band black majesty right and i just wanted to it was it was sort of um selfish and i know it sounds a bit weird but i just wanted to make the album that i wanted to make and um i've I've worked with paul lane many times i've played guitar in paul lane's band um his solo band so we've known each other you know for for a good while now so we kind of bounced a lot of ideas off each other as well. Yeah. Who who wrote Don't Wait For Me? Don't Wait For Me was Paul Lane. It's a great song. Oh, my that's God. The, that's the only song that I don't <laughs> feature, I don't feature in. That is a killer. That I got to say, man, the song cool. is the definitive proof of what a talented band Wicked Smile it is. Yeah, look. It, yeah. You know? well, that, Danny's vocal is fantastic. Uh, the, the guitar solo by Dave is fantastic. Um, and lyrically and, and musically, I think Paul did a fantastic job. And that's the thing. If For me, I'm also that guy that if a song's a good song, I don't care if I didn't write it. You know what I right. mean? It's such a good song. You know, And a lot of people forget that because um, – you know, maybe it's ego. I don't know what it is, or if you just don't know what a good song is. But when I heard that song, I said to Paul, "Man, that's that's mm-hmm. a killer." Yeah, 
and when we play that one live is just it goes off you know it really does people are fantastic all the the lights go up on the phones and stuff so yeah it's great you're going to do more of that in the future i more, agree you know, i agree ballads I agree. you know slow ballads yeah, 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 definitely. I agree. And Danny, Danny does a great job with him, and it just shows another side of Danny. And um, it, it's awesome. We actually played that at Glamfest recently, and really, and, you know, it went over really well. So even though we played, I think for thirty minutes, we we still played a ballad, and you know, it was questioned for a while. <laughs> but um, yeah, we it just it went over really well, and it confirmed that you know we we should have done it. I'm glad that we did do it. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. I love it. Yeah, thank you. Some of the other tracks, you know, you begin with Date with the Devil. That's the heaviest of heavy metal tracks. <laughs> when, okay. you, yeah. when you got a date with the devil, that's pure heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That that's was the cool. last song for the album, actually, that one. Yeah. Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wait for the Night, I thought was, for some reason, I put well-produced and engineered on that tune. That's a that's a great and that's a video. The wait for the night official video, right on YouTube. Yeah, it is, and that yeah. one was yeah, it was done during COVID. Um, right that one, so all in separate rooms, um, and that one was very influenced by Dio. That song. How 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 did you guys get that sound? I mean, it's it's perfect, you know, and it, it's just you guys in a, in in a room basically. Just and it sure. seems like you guys were just you know jamming away, but the sound was yeah, incredible. No, it, it, yeah, no, it just it worked well. It just really huh. it worked well, and you know, and again, you know, Paul did a great job as well. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, it's Thank incredible. You. Mm. We fall that sounded a little bit like Judas Priest to me. Also, oh, cool. awesome opening, awesome opening on that. Oh, um, thank you. That, that's one of the did you do at the start? Oh, you is that what it is? Really? Yeah, yeah I didn't know yeah, that. That sounds cool. Yeah, yeah it's got the did you? Yeah, we just wanted to. Just um, again, just show people where we're from being in Australia. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, that was the first song that Danny sang. And that's when we knew that we had something special. Mm. So w w when we demoed that song, we just go, mm. all right, cool. This band is going to be a serious band. Yeah. Sign of the Times, another heavy, hardcore guitar tune, very 80s. Love the yeah. tune. Days of Delirium, great title. Thank you. Um, Killer at Large, very ACDC opening. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, definitely, yeah. How about ACDC coming back? They take another tour of U.S. and you open up for ACDC. How's that? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Um, yeah. Back in the day, they actually played um at a high school near near where i lived um, really? i was too, i was too young of course but that's how hard they work that band yeah man so absolute legends for sure brian johnson has a house about half an hour from me oh wow that's cool. yeah he's i'm in sarasota area. florida area he, and of course uh -huh. he's got a huge card collection you know he's yeah, really uh, into cars and things like yes, that I, yeah i think i've seen him on some youtube videos and shows yeah cool yeah um love's got a hole on you very heavy track love it again i love that album man and i can't wait for you guys to, guys to put out another album that'll be great okay. cool. we'll, we'll definitely talk again in with the new for album sure. for sure you you were actually with black majesty for what about 20 years wow yeah, man. yeah. Wow. as i mentioned you um i put out eight albums with them and mm -hmm. um i was fortunate enough to um play all over the world with, and we never played America, but we played Varken open air in Germany. We played masters of rock in Czech Republic. And so we, we went all over the place um, and it, it was great fun. You know, I absolutely love it. And it's um, something that I grew to enjoy more and more as things went on, along because um, power metal, when you're playing that style, it's very, um, for those people who don't know, it's, there's almost like a recipe where it's a lot of it's double bass and guitars are all jigga 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 you know? So yeah. it's like if you, if you don't know the band Halloween, look them up because that's sort of the <laughs> style that we, we kind of did. And um, but it was it was it was great fun and it pushed me as a guitar player as well. And um, and I, I cherish the memories of being in that band and 
um, still mates to this day with all the guys. Um, so, yeah, it was just one of those things that after playing in the band for 20 years, I just wanted to get back to my roots and, you know, get, get a bit more sort of hard rock, heavy metal, sure. you know. What are the guys doing now? Is the band um, still well, they're, they're working. Yeah, they're working on a yeah. new album. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, well, we just gigged together um, recently as well. And um, so it was Wicked Smile and Black Majesty. It was fantastic. It really was. It was mm -hmm. great. Really good. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll always, you know, um, uh, you know, help out the guys and support the guys because it's been a big part of my life, obviously. Yeah. Mm. You could even do a, th a three billing, you know, a tri billing tour. Cassidy, <laughs> yeah, with Cassidy and that's that'd right, be great. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, we, um, I, I've, I've loved that, and I've, I've loved playing in Cassidy's band as well because it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different, and um, it's allowed me to sort of get back to, you know, you listen to some of the stuff by, you know, artists like Pat Benatar and stuff, and you just, she, she was good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, people. Um, you know, who don't know, like, you know, uh, you know, surely Lizzie Hale and um, mm -hmm. artists were influenced by her and, you know, she's just such a good singer and so many good songs. I think, um, and I think they were husband and wife, right? Um, from memory. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, if Cassidy does a tour, say, in the U.S., would you be her bass player? Uh, yeah. At, yeah. at this stage, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. We're going back to the UK. It's all confirmed. Right. Um, July and August. And I'm I'm playing bass on that too. I'm playing bass with her next week. So oh, awesome. So it's all a, it's a good learning thing for me. And sure. Uh, yeah. And I'm just so happy that I'm. It's almost like passing the baton, you know, to um, right. to the to the to the new guys, you know, um, because Tom's mm -hmm. a great guitar player as well, and mm -hmm. I'm excited for what's coming up because I've heard some of her new demos for the. Um, second album and it's excellent it really is it's excellent i know i'm biased because i'm dad but i still know what good songs are <laughs> you know so yeah. she's um writing some great songs she's writing with some great writers so it's fantastic yeah yeah tom was on the zoom call with cassidy i watched some yeah. of the video yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, it, immediately i knew he wasn't from australia he was from england <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah. well him and his brother yeah um have, have moved to Australia to live. Yeah. So right. to join his band, which is awesome. I mean, yeah. how cool is that? You know, that's that you don't hear of stuff like that happening very often. Yeah. You know, when, nice guy. When really nice in guy. their 20s. You know yeah. what I mean? So exactly. That's right. cool. Yeah, exactly. But they, they love um, the vision and they love, you know, playing rock and roll. So good on them. Mm -hmm. Well, here's some tidbits about Steve. Okay. Yep. Favorite movies. Okay. I did some homework here. Jaws. Okay. Scarface yep. and Back to the Future, right? That you? What? That, that that's all true. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Those are great movies. <laughs> cool. And your favorite TV show, Seinfeld. Love it. Me and my daughter have the you know the Seinfeld isms all the time. We you know go back and forth, you know, like and say yep. things like you know I I hate to give it up, you know, about the car and you know the parking space and. All kinds of yeah. stuff. We always come up with Seinfeld isms with each other every time. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, my daughter said the other day, "These pretzels are making me thirsty." Yeah, me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so That's my funny. kids have grown up on it as well. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. funny. Yeah. Australia, Australian rules football. Go Lions! Yeah, man, huge, <laughs> huge fan. I actually wrote a song for them and got oh, to perform. Good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, got to perform at um, state, uh, the uh, Melbourne Stadium. And, yeah, it's – my son is, like, a, a big on that game, and he's a mm -hmm. good footballer. So he's – Really? Just, yeah, he's just turned 18. Um, and have you seen the game? Do you know – Do you know? Is that rugby? It? Basically rugby? No. Nah. Nah. It's not. So it's uh, – yeah, you'd have to watch it to sort of get an understanding. But it's very, very physical. Mm -hmm. And the ball is, it's like an oval shape, um, like a rugby ball. But in rugby, you don't um, kick the ball, whereas in this, you kick the ball, you right. move. And it's it's a very, very tough game. So there's no padding or anything like that. Oh, jeez. Um, so, yeah. But it's, um, 
it's 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 awesome i love it is there a scrum do you have a scrum uh not not the same kind of no as what okay in rugby, yeah, it's completely but, different then it is, yeah, very it is different. Different. Yeah. yeah yeah it is different it's a very fast game as well i'll check it out on youtube yeah it's crazy it let me just <laughs> say this if you watch the game for the first time like when i visited the states before and i show friends um in america they go are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> no. Especially with no padding. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Have you played uh, it? Do you play? Yes, I played it as, as a kid, and yeah. uh, my my son's very good at it, actually. Wow. Yeah. Well, my son is a giant compared to me. He's six foot five. So <laughs> six I'm, five. I'm barely, Holy cow! Yeah, I'm barely six foot. So yeah, he's uh, um, yeah, he's it's what's in the chicken in Australia, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. The um, what was his name? Jacko was he? Was he? The, do you remember Jacko? He was, yes. Was he? He was one of them. Yes. He yes, was correct. a monster, man. That guy was tough. Yes, he, was. <laughs> he, was, yeah, he was crazy. Yes, that's right. Because I forgot that he had a bit of success in the United States. He cool. did commercials here. Yeah. 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 He was He's cool. Very, yeah. Very typical. Yeah. Very typical Aussie. That's for sure. <laughs> very cool. What's um. Crocodile Dundee doing nowadays? <laughs> Do you know? Is he still in uh, Australia? The original, um, Paul Hogan. Yeah, Paul uh, Hogan. I know he got yeah. in some w hot water. Yeah, with that's the Australian right. yeah. government. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not too sure, but um, back in the day before Crocodile Dundee, he had his own comedy show, and it was hilarious. It was right. so funny, um, but. Yeah, no, I don't know. I haven't really watched his movements and stuff um, because I guess the the, the uh, Steve Irwin, the Croc Hunter, he kind of took over before he mm -hmm. passed away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. But I, I'm always having Americans and Canadians saying to me, <laughs> "That's not a knife." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <I know. laughs> the first time I met Paul Lane in person. Um, <laughs> he was at my house and and I'm and I'm cutting something up and he goes that's not a knife really that's funny that's hilarious <laughs> this is a knife <laughs> yeah he's awesome yeah yeah exactly. we all loved him over here in America yeah yeah he, he very yeah. funny guy that's for sure and, and Steve Irwin too was a big we were all fans of Steve Irwin he's, and now yeah absolutely. his daughter yeah. his daughter yeah. just had an operation or something right yeah well he's, hospital his kids have done uh, mm -hmm. I'm not too sure but um yeah have done well and good on him you know um uh yeah I, I look i love i'm very i love success stories you know mm -hmm. whether it's australian or not you know i just love i'm a very positive guy so um yeah i just i, I love uh learning new things and you know just you know when people are doing well for themselves good on them you know um i i, I just recently finished a, a rick springfield book you know i'm really? talking about yeah his film stuff yeah, yeah. and um, because he lived a lot of um, his mm -hmm. time in, um, in Australia, and it's a very, you know, very interesting book. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I would love to come on Australia. I have to talk my wife into it because it's a long trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, look, it is a long trip, but it's definitely worth seeing. I mean, the um, the band Taiketo, um, mm -hmm. are you familiar? With that? Yeah, I am. Danny Vaughan and um, his band came over for Glamfest, and they absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Cassidy sort of showed him around Melbourne and Sydney, um, and they absolutely loved it. Yeah, really, really, um, yeah, good vibes. So yeah, and there's you know contra contrary to what a lot of people think, there there is not you know I haven't seen a spider in <laughs> like a long time. You know, there's no snakes unless you you really want to get to the outback. You know, um, so yeah, that's what that's what I heard. Yeah. Um... You know, they call Florida the Australia of the United States because, you know, we got a lot of alligators here and tons of – we got crocs. We have wild pigs. We have coyotes. Uh, we have um, the Florida panther, and we've got pythons. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, yeah. they came, somebody let loose one a long time ago in the Everglades, and it multiplied like thousands wow. and thousands of pythons, and now they're coming up towards us. Oh, so man. Yeah. yeah and we well, got when I went, spiders <laughs> when i went to florida i remember um sometimes like just looking out and you'd see the little bubbles you know, <laughs> the, uh, 
alligators. So that was kind of quite of, uh, kind of interesting. Um, but I I love kangaroos. I got oh, I got to well, see a kangaroo. We got kangaroos here. Some sometimes people keep them here. You know, as pets. Yeah, right. Oh, well, that's that's amazing to me. Um, yeah, they're not not pets here, but we, we have kangaroos near nearby my house. Actually, the Do school you? I'm an elementary school teacher, right? Um, and I'm a substitute teacher, and um, we were playing a game of football recently, and we had to go into um, like all the kids at the freeze because kangaroos jumped on the field <laughs> and that sounds really weird to people but that's what happens like um yeah so we've got kangaroos nearby but they can actually um like if you're driving your car and they hit you it's pretty full on you know um yeah. they're strong yeah they're very strong and we, we've never ever had an issue with the kangaroos here mm -hmm. um but, but some people when you're driving you know they it can be it can be dangerous because they can really um yeah cause a Big accident, you know, that's for sure. Um, and cause damage on your car. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. They like to fight, but I understand, right? They like to they kick you and... Um, if you... <laughs> I, if, if someone's <laughs> into a kangaroo, I'm sure it will, you know, and I mean, I've seen some of the videos you talk about. They're very strong, right? Yeah, um, they're really strong. <laughs> yeah, but look, I've never, ever seen that. And we have kangaroos really close to us. Yeah. And I've never seen a kangaroo get angry um <laughs> but if um <laughs> the thing is if you were to do something to a kangaroo if that claws you you're dead that, that will slice you really you know I mean? is that right yeah. and they're like a huge claws you know yeah. and um i still there's one video with a guy he um i think the kangaroo tried to hurt the dog or something he, and he punches the kangaroo have you seen that i saw video? that <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. wow that's so that's amazing to me you yeah. know because Far out. I mean, it's pretty gutsy to, to do that because the kangaroos are pretty full on and they can be big, man. You know, mm. um, how about that yeah. one really strong kangaroo? I mean, the muscles on that guy. Yeah. 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 I saw that. Yeah. That's... Very scary. You know, they're like human. You know, they look human yeah. in a way. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But, Very cool. Yeah. No, man, I've, I've never, ever, and I've worked, you know, within the area for a long time and um, we've never, ever had any dramas with kangaroos. Yeah. They're, they're, they're fine. You know, not that we go padding them anything you know they're wild um but yeah see i would try to pet them and get close <laughs> yeah you gotta be careful man you know yeah, <laughs> it's, know. it's a wild one if you go to if you go to the zoo i'm, I'm sure you can pet those ones yeah. <laughs> you can brought up differently <laughs> what what grade do you teach i'm a substitute so anything from okay. the age of you know four and a half to 12 oh um, really so, oh. It, yeah I've been a substitute teacher for through choice just because I'm a muso as well because I tour, right. um, so I can't be a full time teacher. But any, yeah, any any grade I do, and all um, mm -hmm. music, art, you know, teach maths, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, yeah, all good. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, my daughter's a teacher, and my son in law's a teacher also. Oh, wow. Yeah, and my sister in law's a teacher. We got a lot of teachers in our family. <laughs> right. Okay. right. Steve, yeah. here's your final question. I ask everybody oh. this question. I get some very interesting answers. Uh -huh. You had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie. That's my favorite movie, Field of Dreams. To perform oh. or collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Ronnie James Dio. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, and what was the second part of the question? They could be living. They could be yeah, gone. Yeah, I'd you know. I'd say, yeah, Ronnie James Dio and probably Eddie Van Halen would be a close. Eddie second. Van Halen, okay. Yeah, yeah, just cool. because of, you know, um, Ronnie James Dio has always been my favourite singer um, on many of my favourite all-time albums, and Eddie Van Halen, um, just because he, he seen what he did for the guitar first mm -hmm. of all, but uh, right. He just uh, seemed like a pretty happy guy. I mean, I, I know that there were ups and downs and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, he seemed like a real lover of music, um, and that's cool. Yep. Very mm -hmm. cool. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. Number one answer what, I always get uh, is Paul what, McCartney. What, 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 are your, <laughs> what, are your, what are your answers for, to, for that? Um, <clears throat> you know, I've met all my heroes already, and uh, my favorite – is Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull? I've interviewed him three times. Last Ooh. last last time I told him he was my hero, and he told me, "I bet you say that to all the girls." 
<laughs> He's <good>. funny. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, Jethro Tall Ian Anderson was my my big hero, I think, growing up. Well, I met was... George. I met George Lynch. He was one of my, he's one of my heroes. Yep. I didn't I didn't talk to him on the recent tour, but um I've met him a couple of times. Mm-hmm. He's always been so, so cool and yep. so nice. Um, you know, and you always hear of people saying, Don't meet your your heroes, but he he was fantastic. Yep. Um, and really took the time out to talk. Um, and that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I've but done I over would... si- I've done over 600 interviews, Steve. I haven't had one bad one. That's, I haven't that's... had a, no conflicts. Everybody's been nice as anything. We had, we always had a great time. And that's how it should you know, be, man. That's, that's the way that's... it should be. But that's rock and roll, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all, all yeah. good people. All good people. Fantastic. I'm going to say... Very special thanks today for Cassidy Paris for setting up this interview. She's the one who told me, you got to interview my dad. (laughs) I love that. That (laughs) She's watching out for you. Don't worry. (laughs) Um, Purchase the latest release by Wicked Smile, Nighttime Writers. And the debut full-length album, Wait for the Night by Wicked Smile. And they're both available at wickedsmileband.com. Um, also, they're on Amazon too, and, and for people around the world, I guess. Yep. You guys are on your official website, www.wickedsmileband.com. You're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Spat- Spotify. And I want to mention also www.cassidyparis.com. Your daughter, your great daughter, your wonderful daughter. Thank you, Ryan. Hey, man, it's been a real pleasure. Um, you guys are awesome, and I really mean that. You, you know, you, 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 got, you, you guys sound like you've been together forever. You really do. You guys mesh well. Um, I really hope you make it big, and I hope you make it big in the States, most of all. But Thank even you. if you don't, you can make it big in so many other countries, and that's that's okay, too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But no, definitely, man, when we uh, we will come to the States now. Okay. Or if it'll be with Wicked Smile or Cassidy Paris or hopefully both. But, um, you know, when we do get to the Florida area, I'll look you awesome. up. I'll, I'll <laughs> send you a message via uh, Messenger. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That'll be great. I'll bring my daughter too. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Steve. Take care, man. Cheers. Thanks. Appreciate you, it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.